Good morning, good morning, good morning. Once again, it's Glendon Cameron here with The Corporate Citizen. Today we're going to talk about the looming liquidity crisis, or as the simple folks would say, the credit crunch. Right now, I've got about $400,000 worth of credit cards, right? And I fully expect some of these credit cards to be closed. Currently, I have one credit card with maybe 800 bucks on it, which I treat like a debit card. I pay it off every week. And I've transitioned my spending to my business credit cards because that's typically where most of my spend is. But even I, with an 832 credit score and a $350,000 a year income, I am going to experience some of the credit crunch. So I'm about to tell you, if you have a HELOC and it is still in your banking dashboard, what you need to do is to write a check from your HELOC to your personal account today. When this credit crunch starts, they're not going to say, hey, dear Mr. Banking customer, in two weeks we're going to close your HELOC. No, you're just going to wake up one morning and you're going to look in there and you're going to see that it's gone. That's what's going to happen. Banks do not announce when they're going to close your accounts. They just close that puppy. Now, one of the things, and I have a video over there at Savage Finance talking about using other people's money. And this is a game that is about to enter into sudden death match. Right now, you can still get credit. Right now. I suspect that the first quarter of 2022 is when you're going to start to see this stuff being rolled out. You're going to find it hard. Now, for people who are getting mortgages, what's starting to happen is the market is starting to self-correct. People know they need a good credit score. People know they need cash down. So I don't feel that this credit crunch is going to impact the housing market uh, for a few reasons, like it did in the Great Recession. Number one, inventory is low. Number two, there are people who want to sell their houses, but they're afraid because if they sell their house, they're gonna find it challenging to buy another house. So in number one, people are knowing that they have to be qualified to be, buy a house. Number two, inventory is low. Number three, people are afraid to sell their house. And number four, the looming foreclosure crisis. It's coming, but I feel that the foreclosure crisis is going to start 2023 and really pick up steam 2025. We're looking at, it's literally gonna take four or five years for them to go through all of these foreclosures and because it's gonna take such a long time and because the marking, the housing market inventory is low, uh, I have been looking at the market and I am seeing that people are renting houses in my neighborhood for fantastical prices. So that lets me know that the inventory is low and I don't really feel that this credit crunch is going to impact housing like it did during the Great Recession. But the credit crunch is going to mess up with the stimuli ballers or what I like to call the credit ballers. You guys know that I've been making videos and saying stuff like the reason I believe you're financing a supercar is because you don't have cash. And what's going to happen is these people who are used to living on credit, once again, I got a good credit score. I got $400,000 for, for credit cards, right? I am going to experience some of this credit crunch. It's gonna hit me too. So for these STEMI ballers who are low on cash, who are low on revenue and low on cash flow, it's really gonna slap them upside the head. Um, you're gonna see less people buying supercars because they're not gonna be in the position of, you know, literally, for about a year or two, you're gonna see people who were buying supercars willy-nilly, they're gonna stop. 
You wanna know why? Because they can't get loans. This credit crunch is going to impact them. And the credit crunch is really going to impact the average person. The average person who's trying to use other people's money, use credit to get wealthy, is really about to be slapped off the totem pole. If you've got a marginal credit score and you don't have high income, you're gonna find it very difficult to get a mortgage. You're gonna find it challenging to get a car loan. You're gonna find it challenging to get a credit card. In this current environment, you can still do that stuff. But mark my words, the beginning of 2022, as we roll into 2023, this credit crunch will be massive. Like once again, and I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. If you have a current HELOC and you have money, you need to write yourself a check to your personal account today. And just so you can have access to those funds because during the credit crunch, because so many people will not be able to get credit, there are gonna be amazing deals for people with cash. There are gonna be amazing deals. There's gonna be deals on trucks. There's gonna be deals on cars. There's gonna be deals on certain housing sectors. Like if you're trying to buy housing close to a city, in a city or close to a city, forget about it. That's gonna be hard. But you can get a house in East Booga Booga, in Outback, you can get a house and you can, there will be cash deals around the country for people with cash during this credit crunch because people are not gonna be able to finance. You're gonna have people who would wanna have $300,000 for their house, but they'll take 220 if you walk with them, it's like, hey, I can give you 220 cash. They're gonna take that cash money. And I feel that this credit crunch, like I said, it's gonna start in 2022, it's gonna really roll to 2023, and then once the foreclosures, because what I, what I suspect is gonna happen is once the foreclosures start really rolling, this is when the banks are gonna start loosening up uh, lending standards again. So we're gonna go through probably an 18 to 24 month period where it's gonna be really, really hard to get credit unless you are extremely well qualified. If you're extremely well qualified, you have the credit score, you have the income, you have the debt to income ratio, you will still be able to get credit. But once again, this will be for people with pristine credit reports. This is for people who have cash flow, and this is for people who don't have a lot of debt. If you got a good credit score and you've never been late on anything, but you're loaded down, then you're not gonna be able to get any more credit. Simply not gonna happen. So what's gonna happen for the STEMI ballers, for all these folks who've been living on credit, you're going to see them change their ways. Like you're gonna, like me, I live on cash. I operate on a cash basis. My, my ways are not gonna change. I'm gonna continue to do what I'm doing. However, you will see certain YouTubers take a pause on the things that they're doing because they're not gonna be able to get loans. They're not gonna be able to get funding. And for the average person who's listening to these YouTube gurus, listening to these Instagram gurus about using credit to turn credit into cash, that's gonna get very, very sketchy. It's gonna get very, very sketchy, especially if you're on the credit bubble. Now, what is the credit bubble? The credit bubble is you've got like a 680. Not quite, a, not quite subprime category, but not quite a 700. You know, you're in the 680, 690. You're kind of on the bubble and you're going to experience some difficulty. Like right now, that 680 operates like a 750. If you got a 680, you can get a credit card, you can get a car loan, you can get a mortgage. But going forward, that 680 is going to make a bank's going to be like, mm, I don't know about you. I don't know about you. So you're going to have to move it to the 720. Ideally, you want to be at a 725. That's going to be the sweet spot because at a 725, you can pretty much get the same deals as someone with an 820. I mean, there's not going to be, I mean, we're talking about 
a pay a difference in the payment of maybe five bucks a month, maybe 60 bucks a year. So that 725 is going to position you to get whatever you want, whatever you need. But more importantly, let's have this conversation. You guys need to start working on your income because this is going to be a big factor because what's going to happen right now, there's a bunch of fintechs. My Divi credit card was underwritten based upon the cash that I have in my bank. So my credit limit fluctuates. Like if I have a lot of cash in the bank, my credit is like, you know, I think the highest has ever been with the Divi was 185. Currently it's at 25 because I've been using cash to buy cars and I've moved cash out that account. So it fluctuates and I would never ever spend $180,000 on my Divi charge card. It's not a credit card. This is, I thought I had lost this, but it doesn't work. So if you see the numbers, don't be freaking out because it, it doesn't work because I got another one. Uh, this is my Wells Fargo um, credit card. It's $25,000 limit. I use this more than I use my personal credit because it's an actual credit card. I actually have two of them and one I went ahead and just paid off and the other one I'm letting Mac Daddy Autos pay it off because I have that flexibility. Whereas if it was a charge card, I would have had to pay it off in full in 30 days. And the car business, I'm getting like, you know, anywhere from $380 a day up to maybe $1,800 a day. So I'm able to make consistent payments and I feel this month that I will get that credit card paid off from the car business because that's where most of the charges, that's where all the charges is coming from. I have a dedicated business credit card for Mac Daddy Autos and that's for gas, car washes, registrations, insurance. I mean, I have a lot of expenses with that business. So it just made sense to get a business credit card because many people's like, Here, here's the thing. <clears throat> If you go ahead and get business credit for each one of your businesses and you don't have adequate cash flow, uh, Mac Daddy Autos made $21,500 last month and Turo did $1,200. So I had $22,700 go through that account. So that's pretty robust revenue because I've had so many expenses with car repairs and stuff that I don't have any money in the operating account. But October, I'm definitely gonna have money in the operating account and that's the money I'm gonna use to start buying cars again. So right now I'm taking the chill because I'm operating on a cash basis. Once again, you guys need to work on getting your income up because winter is coming. And if you do not have adequate income, you're going to have to have pristine credit and you're going to have to have significant income and you're going to have to have little to no debt to play the credit game in 2022, 2023, 2024. You're going to see it is coming right now. You could go out and get credit. You got 680 you can get you a chase. You can, you can get a lot of stuff right now. The credit crunch is coming. So what I would do if I was you, I would get as much credit as I can right now. Because typically, uh, like I said, some of my credit cards are gonna get shut off, but not all of them. And it just depends. So if you go ahead and go out, like do what, what, what I like to call is an app orama. What is an app orama? You fill out five to 10 credit card apps the same day, just boom, 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 right back to back to back to back. And then you get five or 10 credit cards, right? I would do that right now to buffer what's coming because let's say you have five credit cards right now and they shut off two. Now you have three, but what if you had 15 or you had 20 credit cards? You had 20 credit cards and then they shut off three or four. You still have 15, 17 credit cards, right? So what you need to do is start getting all of the credit that you can, lines of credit, he locks. Well, you need to get that now before the environment changes because it's going to change. It's going to get real tough and you need to go ahead and convert that credit into cash into your personal or business accounts now. 
next before the end of the year because if you wait until 2020 because like i said banks do not send out warning 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 credit crunch is about to they don't do that they just shut your stuff down <laughs> they just shut you down so when you really need it that's when they won't be there so right now you need to be getting all of the credit all of the stuff that you can because we're about to enter into a winter that's going to be like no other because typically during a credit crunch housing takes a dip but i don't really feel based upon so many things that are going on with the economy i don't think housing is going to take a dip but there is going to be a credit crunch and then you know it's already a challenge for first-time homeowners to buy a house it's going to become more challenging in 2022 2023 and 2024 because the economy is going to be rolling because we also have the economy going back to normal during the pandemic the economy hyperinflated in certain segments Toro a lot of people start putting cars on Toro DoorDash Uber drivers Lyft drivers making six figures this was hyper segmentation of the pandemic economy and it's starting to move back to normal and a lot of people got addicted kiss you my favorite expression luxuries once tasted become necessities a lot of people are not going to be ready for when the economy goes back to normal and it's actually going to go a little bit below normal because of the great slowdown because one of the big issues that's happening with the pandemic is supply chain issues you cannot like I went and bought a new computer for Mac Daddy Autos and there was literally no computers in the store. You have to order your computers online because the stores don't have inventory uh, because so many people working from home uh, printers and stuff. Things that you need to work from home are like not available. So with the economy going back to normal with this credit crunch. You need to govern yourself accordingly if you want to use credit, because like I said, um, I'm probably first of January. I'm going to apply because January, this my first uh, credit card with Wells Fargo should convert. Well, actually, it should convert in October. And then I'm going to go to Wells Fargo and see if I can get a business line of credit. Once again, C, even though I am well qualified, in this current environment, they're going to be looking at you much harder than they looked before. And once again, fortunately for me, I can still operate on cash and still grow my car rental business with the proceeds of the car rental business. Because October, I should be past a lot of these repairs and these expenses, and I should be able to buy two or three cars in October, two or three cars in November, two or three cars and well pro definitely three cars in november and december and just put them in there because once again i'm getting ready to take some time and to really focus on what's working with that business and not what's working because i've got some data from people renting my cars that i'm like okay i need to make some adjustments because right now i have 11 cars in the parking lot three are wrecked three are wrecked and I have one car at Pet Boys, and I have two cars that are being fixed, the white BMW, the Acura TL that the Yardbird left on the side of the road. I should have those back by October, and I've got two cars at European. So what I would be in a better position if those eight cars that I can rent that I have on hand were out. So I'm gonna make some adjustments to get those cars out and get and increase my daily revenue for my rental car business. So I'm working on that. But guys, you, you, you got to get your cash flow up. You, you've got to get your cash flow up because if you're on the, the bubble, that 680, 690 bubble, that 680, which is operating like a 720, it will not operate like a 720 once we get into the credit crisis and the liquidity crisis. Once again, if you have a good credit score and you have good income and you have a good credit profile, you will still be able to get credit. But if you're on the bubble, mm -mm, nope, nope, nope. So how does one go ahead and get more income? This is where the corporate papers come into play. 
I'm gonna teach you how to set up a holding company. I'm gonna teach you how to set up an operating company. But more importantly, I'm gonna teach you how to get customers. <clears throat> you see all of these YouTube ads of these people doing all of this stuff and they're talking about running these businesses and they never get into how to get customers, which is the most important thing you can do for your business. And that's what we're spending this month on and next month. Next Tuesday, 7 p.m., we're gonna have a live training. I noticed there was a big dip when we moved to Tuesday. Uh, I'm gonna look at the NFL schedule. I might go back to Sunday training. It ain't gonna happen on Saturdays because I'm a college football junkie. But I might go back to Sunday training, uh, just seeing, because the NFL kicked off last night and we're gonna have NFL games on Sunday. And I'm going to test this out because uh, more than likely I might do the training this Sunday. Don't know. Maybe Tuesday. Don't know. I will let you guys know. But go ahead. Go below. Get in the corporate papers because the corporate papers are going up October 1st. That link's below. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.